my name is Petra Wright. And I'm Hilary Chapman. We are here to represent the USA chapter of the International Association of Art, the IAA USA. Today we celebrate World Art Day. World Art Day is an international celebration of the fine arts, recognized by UNESCO to promote international awareness of creative activity. The first official World Art Day was held on April 15, 2012. The date was chosen to honor Leonardo da Vinci's birthday, who was an expression of world peace, freedom of expression, tolerance and community. In the U.S., World Art Day was officially celebrated for the first time on April 15, 2015, and every year thereafter. 2021 marks our sixth annual World Art Day celebration in the city of Los Angeles. Today, we are proud to offer you the official IAA USA 2021 World Art Day contributions. They consist of two public art installations here in Pershing Square, a mural on Main Street by British mural artist C Blocks, and a virtual exhibit hosted on the IAA USA website called You Are Not Alone, featuring 24 artists around the country. Both exhibits will be on display through the end of May. Before we dive into our creative contributions, we'd like to introduce Jonathan Gerald, the co-president of the IAA USA, to share a few thoughts on the significance of World Art Day. Welcome, Jonathan. Hey, thank you, Hillary. Well, it's kind of appropriate I'm standing here in front of the piece that, that I contributed to uh, this installation. It's a portrait of Bedri Baikam, uh, and he's an interesting guy. He's the world president of the International Art Association. You can see him peeking out at the corner there. Bedri got uh, uh, World Art Day in the UNESCO calendar, um, but today I think what World Art Day is all about, uh, it's about uh, the importance of art in everybody's life. I mean, art is, is what makes us human. It's the one of the oldest images that we know of is, is a hand against a cave wall. And uh, uh, art is a part of everybody's life, even if we don't think of it or realize it. Uh, art informs us, it elevates us, and everybody should have an opportunity to think about uh, how that works. And uh, one of the things that the IAA is going to be involved with is to make sure everybody has an opportunity to see uh, the work in the world class art institutions that we have here in LA. Um, uh, we, we had an opportunity in the past to bring people from communities that are just a couple of miles away, people who have never been to the LA County Museum of Art. It's like living in Paris and you've never been to the Louvre. It's crazy. Um, and when people come in who have never seen it and they walk to the museum, it can transform their lives. And so that's that's what we're going to be looking at over the next few years is how to get more people involved uh, in art, return art education to the classroom, uh, and get people into the museums and galleries. Thank you, Jonathan. So this is our first contribution, a mural by Carol Cirillo Stanley. Uh, Carol Cirillo Stanley is a photographer whose work is both realist and abstract, with subjects that range from cityscapes to floral personas. In each series, she tells a story, creating sets and staging scenes to allow the viewer to take part in her fantasy. She has worked in LA for the past decade, focusing on urban environments. This mural is comprised of a selection of the artist's black and white portraits for a series, Still Life. Each, of this, each piece in this portfolio was created to examine the unique personality and characteristics of the subjects. Sassy, sweet, demure, bitchy, strong, supportive, and courageous are only a few of the characteristics she managed to elicit from her subjects. Classic and timelessly elegant, her portraits convey whimsy, strength, and spirit. And another thing we wanted to mention is that the black surrounding the subjects really serves to give dramatic focus to her subjects. But when you shift your perspective, the blackness itself becomes the subject, which serves to become a metaphor for the isolation that we experienced during the pandemic 
during which this series was conceived and created. So that um, is, there is a whole series. These are a few selections of that Still Life series and we encourage you to check them out on Carol's social media feed. We encourage you to check them out on Carol's social media feed. And um, now let's check out the other art contributions in the Art Squared Gallery. This is Damon Martin's Lady Day. Martin studied oil painting at UCLA and he's shown at ICA LA, the Scope Art Fair Miami, the Armory Show in New York, the Los Angeles Art Fair, and he's been a resident artist at the Fountainhead Residency in Miami. He worked with the French artist JR on his Times Square Inside Out installation. He is currently working on new oil on canvas series that focuses on endangered species. Martin actually has a background in mural making, music, and jazz, which you can really see in this work. He uses the contrast of the black and the white to evoke movement, and you can really see the passion and the soul of Billie Holiday's music in this piece. Steven Seemeyer's artist and model. Seemeyer is a Los Angeles born performance artist, filmmaker, and painter. Over the past 40 years, he has mounted performances and exhibitions across the US. Using real fire and other controversial elements, Seemeyer has confronted his audiences with questions of what it means to be human. His films document the early wave of artists who moved into downtown in the 1970s, Young Turks and the evolution of LA's arts district, Tales of the American. In this piece, you can see the skeletal form of the artist at work with the reflection of the human form. And it shows his interest in the human condition as well as the dialogue with mortality. Here we have Rick Robinson's Yaya. Robinson works in cut steel, resin, and mixed media creating graphically sleek, but also raw gestural images that recall petroglyphic or totemic figures, but reference the allure of pop art. His knack for pared down vernacular that is both simple and direct, as well as emotional and mysterious, was honed during the years of experience in the outdoor graphics business. Keith Haring is an influence for Robinson, and his work is also described as primitive pop. This is a great representation of these angular, primal figures in celebration of World Art Day. Hi, so this is Jonathan Gerald's contribution to World Art Day. Jonathan studied at California College of Arts and apprenticed at the Heidelberg workshop of protest poster artist Klaus Steck. His work has been featured in the Artist Catalog and in recent exhibitions at the Los Angeles Center for Digital Art, Gloria Delson Contemporary Arts, and the Choo Choo Lounge on Sunset Strip. This piece is entitled Bedry's Big Day and is an homage to Bedry Bicom's creation of World Art Day because it was truly Bedry's brainchild. Bedry is the world president of the IAA Europe. Um, so I wanted to point out some of the visual references beneath the Brock-inspired collage at the center. Uh, the piece is also first and foremost a reference to another artwork of Bedri's, which is Bedri's History of Art. And in sort of the circular da Vinci uh, circle fashion, I'm going to take you around the poster, uh, the, the artwork with the uh, different visual references. So at the center again, we have a portrait of young Bedri as well as a very well-known artwork by his, which later became a book entitled, This Has Been Done Before. In the top right, of course, we have uh, Vincent van Gogh's Sunflowers. Beneath that, we have a nod to Basquiat with his dinosaur. Below that is a portrait by Bedri of uh, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, the founder of the Turkish Republic. Beneath that, we have a Banksy reference. Coming around, we have Barbara Kruger, an early shepherd fairy, and then we end up in the Da Vincian circle with Leonardo da Vinci to celebrate his birthday. So that is Bedri's big day.
This next artwork is by Adam Elish. I'm going to start with his artist statement. Adam writes, World Art Day is for me a day of remembrance. It reminds me to be faithful to my art, which is where my love lies. This year, my art speaks of my extensive travel to international events to which I was invited as an artist. The places, sights, sounds, smells, voices, touches, tastes, and words spoken are very fresh in my mind. Remember your voices, your dreams, your freedoms. Hold them close. Do not release them easily, for they are you. And that's Adam Edelsch. So this particular piece is from his mnemonic devotion series. This is mnemonic devotion number one. And Adam, Adam's work always uh, travails in non-linear narrative uh, structures. Uh, going back and forth between a very personal poetic symbolism as well as specific social commentary and commentary on current events. The mnemonic devotion series specifically celebrates freedoms. The freedoms to travel, to peacefully congregate, freedom of speech, the free exchange of ideas, personal autonomy, the freedom from censorship, and of course the freedom of physical interaction. But he says, while we are being safer together during this pandemic, and safer apart rather, he says we are still free to travel in our mind. And that is our right, and that is of course the vehicle through art. So, mnemonic devotion number one by Adam Elish. So this is Ezra Behar's contribution to World Art Day. Ezra Behar is a scientist and a professional artist from Mexico City. His art is informed by a temporary vision loss that he experienced, as well as 30 years of scientific discovery. In his paintings, Ezra searches for alternative realities that are provocative, energetic, and innovative. Over the past decade, his work has been shown in more than 30 solo exhibitions in the U.S. and abroad. This particular piece is called The Orange Mask. And the painting depicts an imaginary conversation between Penelope and a heron. Now, Penelope is actually a large bronze sculpture that is situated on Coronado Island, looking over the ocean towards the city of San Diego, where Ezra lives. She's wearing an orange mask as a nod to the COVID pandemic, and she's having a conversation with the heron. Penelope is also a symbol of patience and waiting, as she was the wife of Odysseus, the main character of the Odyssey. So she is known to have waited patiently for a very long time until he returned from the Odyssey. So what Ezra is implying here is that she will wait patiently until the pandemic is over. The secondary character, of course, is the heron, which is a recurring character in Ezra's paintings, and it represents the discoverer. So that is uh, Ezra Behar's The Orange Mask. So this concludes our public installations in Pershing Square Park. And before we move on to the Main Street mural, we wanted to encourage you to participate and celebrate World Art Day in your own way. If you're an artist, create. If you're an art lover, engage with art. Connect with other artists on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to tag us at IAA USA and use the hashtag World Art Day. Or support local museums and galleries virtually or in person. Such as the Gloria Delson Contemporary Arts Gallery on Spring Street, which is offering two exhibits this month, a group show entitled Vibration and a solo show by kiln-formed glass artist Cynthia Ann Swan entitled V, dedicated to the paintings, life, and letters of Vincent van Gogh, all made out of glass. Both of those exhibits are on through the month of April. But there are many more galleries, public installations, and museums, so please go out, seek them out, and support them. Now please enjoy a short film clip of the creation of the Main Street Mural by British mural artist Sea Blocks, entitled Elemental. Happy World Art Day! Happy World Art Day! Hi, we're in front of the mural that uh, the IAA USA commissioned uh, by the British uh, mural artist Seablocks. Um, 
and it's on a building that was uh, given to us, a wall space that was given to us by uh, the uh, developer Tom Gilmore. And um, this mural, it took, it took C-Blocks, I think, less than 10 days to do this incredible piece. And as you can see, there's a portrait at one end um, of a woman looking out across a landscape towards uh, a rusted old Cadillac. And I think that we can take from that, uh, you know, a sense of the of the virginal desert landscape of Los Angeles, uh, disrupted by the artifacts of mankind. Uh, they're solely being subsumed by the beauty of the desert. So um, it's an interesting piece. It's called Elemental. Uh, it's on, as I said, 415 uh, 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 so South Main. Uh, there's a great place to get uh, donuts and coffee nearby, so come by and, and check it out.